What is kyphosis of the spine and how can it be treated? The spine has natural curves from the in the spine, from the neck to the mid back to the low back. And the curves are designed to help the body adapt to gravity. Now, when we look at the spine from the front, the spine should be completely straight from the neck to the mid back to the low back. But from the side, it should have like a soft S appearance. And again, these curves bend forward in the neck, bend backwards in the mid back and bend forward in the low back. And these curves have very specific name associated with them, which I'll discuss in a second. But these curves really allow the spine to be straight stronger, make it more flexible, make it, make it able to handle mechanical stressors from activity, impact, and gravity. So these curves are very critical for normal spinal function. And like I mentioned, the, the cervical spine normally has a curve that bends forward, which is called the lordosis. The thoracic spine normally has a curve that bends towards your back, which is called the kyphosis. And the lumbar spine bends forward, um, like, like the cervical spine, also calling a lordosis. So each spinal section has its own main curvature and it helps preserve spinal health and function. And the curvature characteristics, they work in unison with each other to really help the spine function better. And like I mentioned, a lordosis means the spine is bending to the front of the body, and a kyphosis means the spine is bending towards the back of the body. Now, when we look at a kyphosis, that means the spine is bending towards the back. Now, having a kyphosis where you're supposed to have a lordosis is obviously abnormal because that will be means that you have a cervical kyphosis. That means your spine is bending in the wrong way. However, if you have a kyphosis where you're supposed to have a kyphosis, but the kyphosis is out of its normal range, that can mean you you have an excessive amount of kyphosis, and that's normally means hyperkyphosis. Now, for this video, what's what we're talking about is normally hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine is by far the most common. However, the opposite's also true. You can have too little of a kyphosis in the, thora the thoracic spine, and that would be a hypokyphosis of the thoracic spine. Hypokyphosis is very often associated with scoliosis. Patients that have a thoracic scoliosis very often have hypokyphosis. Patients with hyper kyphosis also can develop scoliosis, and that would be considered something like a kyphoscoliosis or a scoli kyphosis. And the normal range for the kyphosis is somewhere normally between 25 and 45 degrees. 40 to 45 degrees is considered the ideal number, but there is a normal range. I mean, not everybody has exactly 40 degrees. So for kyphosis to be considered, the curve normally typically has to break 50-ish degrees. And this is where we start saying, okay, there's a hyperkyphosis. And when they start becoming 60 and 70 and 80, they become more severe. So when we have patients that break 80 to 90 degrees, of hyperkyphosis, this is where they start considering kyphosis to become in the severe range where they start considering surgery. Now, symptoms of um, hyperkyphosis in the thoracic spine are typically very unique in terms of what they tend to cause. Now, the most common thing that we tend to see is postural changes, an excessive rounding of the upper and middle back. And that upper and middle back, as it rounds more, the kyphosis becomes larger, and it can definitely normally lead to back pain and and most common thing people tend to notice is stiffness. They can't extend and they can't open their chest up as much because the spine is structurally in this hyperkyphotic position. Hyperkyphosis in the adult form can also predispose patients as curves progress in the adult form for something that we call compression fractures. And this is where the spine, because becomes it's so rounded, there's so much weight moved to the anterior portion of the bones of the spine that they can actually compress. And this compression fracture tends to occur in patients that actually have hyperkyphosis. And the unfortunate thing is that the compression fracture normally worsens the hyperkyphosis, which leads them to more compression fractures over time. So leaving hyperkyphosis untreated and let it become larger and larger and larger can lead to some more serious concerns and conditions, which can, be, which can worsen the, the, whole, the whole picture of what we're seeing in the patient. Now, when we look at kyphosis, how do we treat it? Well, kyphosis is very often treated very similarly to scoliosis. We have to determine the the, the, the state or the shape of the kyphosis in terms of where we see that unique um, stiffness that's occurring. Once we've assessed the severity of the condition and what we think could be associated to the cause, we customize very specific conservative plans. Now for kyphosis that's structurally, we normally focus on treatment that's gonna reduce the kyphosis on a structural level. And normally that means using a combination of chiropractic care, therapy, home therapy, office rehabilitation and exercises, and sometimes even 
corrective bracing to help reduce a thoracic kyphosis. And very often we consider postural considerations, like how they do, how they work and how they sit behind desks to make sure they're not worsening their kyphosis on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, postural kyphosis, that's not structural, meaning the patient can correct it with their own postural, um, postural movements. We tend to do the same type of program, but normally we don't do corrective bracing and we may not do as much of in office therapy and rehab because very often we can just use chiropractic care and exercises to help reduce the kyphosis that's developing. Now, kyphosis that's posturally initially left untreated can become structural over time. So therefore, treating a kyphosis, whether it's postural or structural, is important because they can switch. Postural kyphosis untreated can lead to a structural kyphosis. So here at Scorch Reduction Center, we always address kyphosis to determine its underlying causation, and then we de develop a customized treatment plan in trying to reduce the kyphosis associated with it. And the goal is to re restore normal range of the kyphosis to make the thoracic spine stronger and more functional. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.